Okay, so I'd like to start chapter two with something nice. Um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to use just a uh, uniform, a uniformly charged sphere, right? I mean, we always love our uniformly charged spheres. Um, they're nice, they're easy to deal with. Um, we can uh, show them to our friends. Um, so, so that's what I wanna look at. I wanna look at this guy here. Um, and I want to find his, uh, this, the potential created by uh, this thing. What is the electrostatic potential of a, uni a uniformly charged sphere? Okay, so I guess um, for a sphere we need that radius and for it to be um, uniformly charged we need a charge density uh, rho naught and we need to find something or other right uh, and that was the um, scalar potential and let's call that phi Okay, so um, we got what we're given, we've got what we want to find. Um, we'll need some sort of concept to, to look at this with. Uh, we'll call it the, um, uh, I don't know, electro, electrostatic potential, the electric potential, uh, the scalar potential, all right? And what we're going to do is we're going to look at this work-like formulation of it, which is uh, phi is equal to minus the integral from a reference point, um, which I think I use, from a reference point to um, whatever that position is along the, uh, along some, along the path. Uh, of approach, right? So that should be um, perfectly fine. That uh, that's the equation that we like to we like to use. Um, the strategy here it's pretty straightforward. Uh, well, I mean, to use this, uh, we have to choose a path, right? Um, and I guess we can just choose to start here at zero. That sounds pretty reasonable to me. Why not? Um, and then we have to find the field, right? And how are we going to find the field? Um, well, this is a really nice, um, really nice symmetric charge distribution. So if it's nice and it's symmetric, why don't we use Gauss's law? Right? So that's a really, really good thing to remember how to do is I'm going to give you lots of nice sym symmetric um, distributions. Uh, all the way through the course, all the way through next semester, and uh, the reason for that is is because it's easy to deal with, right? So even if you don't have, and even if you don't have the field, you don't know what it is off the top of your head, it, you just want to try to find it, but you, you don't know it right right now. Um, if it's nice and symmetric, Gauss's law is a good good idea. Ampere's law when we're dealing with magnets, and um, it's something that. It's something that you should keep in your toolbox, okay? You, sh you should have a toolbox to solve physics and engineering problems. Gauss's law should be in that toolbox, okay? So then after we've found that field with Gauss's law, we'll uh, set the potential at zero equal to zero. So we're going to um, set R, this R here, equal to the origin, right? Same difference. Uh, do people say that anymore? Did they ever? Um, now we can integrate. Integration is fun. Um, and, you know, I'm really only putting the integration in there because, you know, it's a teaser, right? I know you're going to listen to all this other stuff just so you can watch me um, do a little bit of calculus because, you, you, you know, I've, I've heard how much you absolutely adore 
um, watching people do calculus and algebra at the board, that's why you pay $15,000 a semester, is because you just love that stuff. Um, and I can't disagree. I mean, that's, that's really a good way to be entertained. All right, so let's go ahead and find that field. All right, so when we're dealing with this, remember we're finding symmetries. Well, what's a symmetry here? It's all around this point. All right, so um, we're going to have this sphere here. And what we're going to want to do is, what we're going to say is that no matter which way we go, if we go the same radius out, the same thing's going to happen. There's always going to be an outward um, field from that. So we'll look at this by using a sphere, a Gaussian sphere around the um, real sphere. And, you know, it'll enclose charge like this. It'll enclose some proportion of the charge if it's on the inside. So if this sphere is smaller than this one, it only encloses, it only keeps a portion of the charge. Um, if we come out here, it's going to get all of this charge, and this doesn't contrib contribute anything, contribute anything, because it's empty space. Okay? So, um, so let's see. Since Gauss's law is, uh, uh, let's see, epsilon naught phi E is equal to Q rank. So the total amount of charge inside this surface, not necessarily this sphere, but inside this surface for this surface, is just a constant, a uh, fundamental constant away from the amount of charge enclosed in, in there, the no, or the amount of flux going through this, um, this sphere. Um, and because all of it's going straight out, uh, we can just use areas and stuff like that. So phi e, which is, you know, e dot a, the, ve the um, vector area, which is the normal times the area of the thingy, uh, that's just um, er times uh, the area of this thing, which we're going to have to actually worry about, um, and that's 4 pi r squared. The enclosed charge, the enclosed charge, that's a little bit different. Like I said, we have this one, this case in here. So when we're on the inside, um, the enclosed charge is the volume of uh, of the uh, of the um, Gaussian sphere. So we use this little r. So it's four pi cubed, four pi over three r cubed um, times rho naught, the charge density. So that's on the inside. And on the outside, we have 4 pi over 3. Um, big R, the um, radius of the uh, charged sphere cubed. Because, again, there's nothing in there, rho naught, so big R is less than little r. Okay. And then from, um, from all this, everything's going to be in the r hat direction. We have this constant in there, so our electric field is, um, oh, we've got a 4 pi in this, so we divide through by the 4 pi, we get the um, epsilon naught in there, so we end up with, um, what, rho naught over 3 epsilon naught little r, when r is less than big R, and rho naught over 3 epsilon naught um, big R cubed over R squared when um, R, little r is greater than big R. Okay, so this is what we wanted to get here. We're ready to go. Um, and, you know, we just, I've, I've already said what we're going to do here. So that's done with part two. So now we do our integration, right? So we said uh, phi of um, R it's going to be the integral from 0 to r. So let's just take this reference, 0 as a reference point, um, of e, which is this thing, right, dot dl. Um, dl is just going to be um, dr, e dot r hat dr. So it's, oh, I forgot the r hats here, r hat. Alright, 
Okay, so now because of that we end up with two cases, right? Um, we end up with the integral from 0 to r of, uh, of what? No, of this rho naught over 3 epsilon naught r dr, right? And we end up with, oh, we've got a minus, minus sign, the integral from zero to big R of rho naught over uh, three epsilon naught R cubed over R squared dr, right? And so that, when we pull out the constants, is minus rho naught over three epsilon naught um, times the integral from 0 to r, r, dr. Oh, this is looking like a complicated integral. I don't know what we're going to do with this. Um, nope. I was just thinking about not making this mistake, so therefore I made it. So this is r, dr, and then we have to add on to that a um, minus integral from big r to little r, rho naught. 3 epsilon naught r squared, r cubed over r squared. Okay, so we've got that bit. Here we have the rho naught over 3 epsilon naught. Um, integral from 0 to r, r dr. And how much room do I have? Probably plenty. Um, plus, go from r to uh, plus r cubed times the integral from big R to little r um, dr over r cubed. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Just need to do a little bit of work here. It's not, not anything you can't handle, right? This is all well within your um, skill set as a junior or a senior in um, college. So, let's see here. Oh, uh, no, I'm not sure if I know how to integrate over a polynomial. I, I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen anything like that at all uh, my entire time um, doing these things. Uh, so there is absolutely no way that it could end up being um, just one half r squared, right? So there we go for part A. Um, for part B, uh, what do we get? We get um, minus rho naught over 6 epsilon naught big R squared. That's this guy. Minus um, rho naught over 6 epsilon naught, um, or 2 epsilon naught, excuse me. 3 epsilon naught one of those numbers, um, times uh, minus 2, because we're, oh, it's r squared, so it's minus 1 half, excuse me, right? So that looks good, so minus 1 half, um, r cubed, over r. No, oh, that's just minus one. What's wrong with that? Okay, so I've got r cubed over r here, uh, minus or plus rho naught over three epsilon naught um, times minus one times minus one. Um, r squared, right? Um, so I think we're pretty much done, right? So we have minus rho naught over six epsilon naught r squared. We're okay with that guy. Um, these two terms, uh, they can cancel or they can combine. Um, Let's see. Okay, so 
we have two sixths plus one sixth is equal to minus um, rho naught over two epsilon naught r squared. Is that so? Plus rho naught over three epsilon naught um, r cubed over r. And that should be continuous. So this is r, little r is less than big R, and this is big R is less than little r. Okay, so that, that looks pretty good. Um, we should always go ahead and use our mad plotting skills. I guess people don't have mad skills anymore. Are we done with people having mad skills? Um, what's the new stupid, or the new um, way that people who can't do anything brag about how good they are at what it is, whatever it is they're not really doing. Um, so let's see, r squared. So we have a parabola coming up, the potential. No, actually it looks like it's going down, doesn't it? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, that's what I get. We have this nice parabola going down, and then it comes back up. Um, let's see, so this is this um, minus rho naught over 6 epsilon naught, right? Uh, when this goes to infinity, we're going to have, um, oops, we're going to have minus 2. Is that, is that what I'm looking at? Um, so we've got minus one half, so that means we have something going on like that. So that seems pretty reasonable to me. Um, so why don't we leave it at that? And why don't um, I see you in class in the next 24 hours or so? Maybe 48 hours. I'll see you in class within the next 72 hours. Okay, next 72 hours, I'll see you in class. Be there. We'll have fun. All right? Talk to you later.